Hey, I'm Trey. Most police know that there are people who believe that we are just mindless cattle to be slaughtered or manipulated. Some of those people are serial killers, like in this story. If you're into real stories about serial killers from around the world, spanning centuries, then this is the channel for you. So hit that button so you can be reminded of new content that I upload every Tuesday and Thursday. Please leave any suggestions or comments in the comment sections. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. 1942, in the country of France, Michael Fournette was born. No information on his youth or family dynamic was provided, but Michael was in and out of prison during his entire youth to adulthood. As an adult, he got married twice and divorced twice. Fast forward to 1987. A 17-year-old girl by the name of Isabella Laville was walking to her home in a suburban area. A woman by the name of Monique Oliver was driving and observed Isabella walking and stopped to ask for directions. Monique began to have small talk with the juvenile girl and after they talked for some short period of time Monique offered Isabella a ride home. I'm sure that Isabella knew the possibilities of getting into a vehicle with a stranger but she felt like they had a connection so she felt like it would be okay. So Isabella accepted the ride and got into the car. Monique began to drive her car for a short distance and observed a man that appeared to have a disabled car alongside of the road. Monique pulled over, spoke to the man briefly and asked him if he needed some help with his car. The stranger requested if she could possibly just give him a ride to the nearest mechanic so that he can get some help with his car and he would be extremely thankful for this. Monique obliged the man and then instructed him to get into the car. That man got into the back seat of that car and that's when he began to give her directions on where to drive. As soon as the car began to accelerate, the strange man pulled out a rope and draped it around Isabella's neck. After a fierce struggle, the man strangled the young girl unconscious. Monique then took a rag containing an unidentified substance and covered Isabella's nose and mouth, forcing her to ingest the substance. That substance completely sedated her. The two of them then brought Isabella to Michael's house. That strange man raped Isabella multiple times. When he was done victimizing the young girl, he then killed her by strangling her to death. The two of them put the body of the victim in their car and drove a short distance away and dumped the body in an abandoned well. Immediately after, Monique took the strange man back to his vehicle, which was never disabled in the first place, and they followed one another back to his house. This is sad, but this is why you should never trust strangers. That strange man's name was Michael Fournette. Monique was his longtime girlfriend and partner in crime at the time. Not too long after this incident, Michael was arrested for unrelated matter and sentenced to prison time. During Michael's time in prison, he met a bank robber by the name of Jean Pierre Hellegard. They became close associates while in prison. Michael was eventually released and contacted by Jean Pierre's wife, Farida Hamich. She informed Michael that her husband told her to contact him in order to help recover the stolen proceeds from that bank robbery. The money had been buried in a cemetery and she needed Michael to unearth it. Michael would be given a portion after that recovery. Michael agreed and they recovered the money together. Several weeks later, Michael's greed got the best of him. Michael devised a plan to get the rest of the money from his ex-cellmate. He secretly returned to Farida's home unannounced, lured her out of the house, and then killed her for the money. Farida was buried in an unmarked grave a short distance away. The stolen money was used to purchase a home in the northern part of France. By August of that same year, Monique was now several months pregnant. Michael and Monique decided to go to a local supermarket together. While outside of the supermarket, they observed a young woman by the name of Fabienne Leroy. Monique began to talk to her, and after a few minutes, Michael chimed in, and the three of them began to have a complete discussion which lasted for a relatively long time. After some time went by, Monique pretended to act violently ill, requesting the young woman's help with directions to a doctor. The three of them got into Michael's car and drove off together. Michael drove to a secluded part of a local forest, pulled over, and then threatened the woman with a handgun that was hidden in his car. 
Michael ordered the young woman to take her pants off and prove to him that she was a virgin. That woman refused, so Michael chose to forcibly rape her. After he was done, he killed the woman by shooting her in the chest. Two of them dumped the poor woman's body at that location. January of 1989, while riding a local train, Michael met a woman by the name of Janine Dismroth, who resided in a local convent. They conversed for a while during the trip until they both reached their destination and went their separate ways. On a later date, Michael and Monique were riding the train together and encountered Janine again. The three of them began to have a basic conversation as they rode the train to their destination. When they arrived together, Michael and Monique requested that she come to their house to continue the conversation as their guest. Jean Marie was intentionally apprehensive because she didn't know them, but she felt like they seemed to be decent people and she could use a ride so she accepted the invitation and she just got in the car. During the ride, Michael outright asked Jean if she were a virgin. Obviously, she was taken back by the statement, but she responded by telling him that no, she wasn't, and she had a boyfriend at the time. Michael became totally enraged, and he attacked her while trying to forcibly rape her. Jean fought back hard. She was so effective from preventing the rape that she almost escaped. With the assistance of Monique, Michael strangled her to death due to his frustration. Michael and Monique then took Jean's body to their home and buried her in their garden. Michael and Monique decided to get married that year after giving birth to their child. A year later, Michael and Monique decided to take the child across to the border into Belgium for an unexplained reason. During that trip, Michael observed a 12-year-old girl by the name of Elizabeth Bridget walking to a friend's house. Michael became so infatuated with her that he had his wife and child wait in the car with him until the girl left the friend's house. When Elizabeth finally emerged from the friend's house, she began walking home. Michael used this opportunity to approach the girl and ask for directions to a local doctor because his newborn child was not feeling well, that she jumped in the car in order to show them where the doctor's office was. Unfortunately, as soon as she did this, the two of them kidnapped and sedated Elizabeth. They took her to their home in France. Michael raped Elizabeth, but not before cleaning her up. When he was done strangling her to death, he buried the body in their garden. A year later, Michael and Monique went to the western coast of France, this time in search of another victim. A 13-year-old girl by the name of Nacha Denas was observed walking through a parking lot to pick up her mother's purse that she left in their car. Michael and Monique persuaded her to stop and give them directions. Natasha willfully climbed into the vehicle to help the couple. Natasha's sister observed her getting into the white van as she was being abducted. When this happened, she was kidnapped by the two and taken to a secluded location. Michael stabbed Natasha to death using a screwdriver and after she was dead, he raped her body still warm. Her body was dumped near a local beach in a secluded location. A neighbor of Natasha's owned a similar van to Michael and Monique's vehicle. The police automatically assumed that another man who was a neighbor was involved with Natasha's abduction. He was arrested and held pending the investigation. Two months later, he killed himself in jail due to his grief of being accused for a crime that he didn't commit. In 2000, Michael drove alone to the French-Belgian border in search of a new victim. The victim was an 18-year-old by the name of Celine Sasson. Celine was lured into Michael's vehicle in an undisclosed manner. Afterwards, she was abducted and taken to a local forest. Michael threatened her to follow his explicit sexual instructions. Out of fear for her life, she submitted to him. Afterwards, Michael strangled her to death and dumped her body in that forest. In 2001, Michael met a Taiwanese 13-year-old girl by the name of Manyana Thumgong. He built up a rapport with the young girl by offering her a ride home one day from a library. Several weeks later, he ran into the girl again and offered to take her home with him so that she can meet his son. Unfortunately, she accepted the offer and climbed into the van with him. Manana was taken to a secluded forest and then Michael raped her then killed her. Her body was dumped at that location. In 2003, Michael attempted to abduct an unnamed 13-year-old girl, but in this case, she managed to escape. The police identified Michael as a suspect and he was brought in for questioning. Unfortunately, without any more witnesses or evidence, 
he was ultimately released due to lack of evidence. In 2004, for some unexplained reason, Michael's wife, Monique, went to the authorities and informed them that her husband had killed several women stretching as far back as 1987. Monique led the investigators to some of the bodies of Michael's victims. Michael was arrested and interviewed. During his interview, he confessed to killing a total of eight women and girls. Michael then led the authorities to where he dumped the bodies of the victims. Michael and Monique were ultimately charged for eight murders, but the authorities believed that they were responsible for as many as 11. They were both charged with eight murders and found guilty of seven. They were both given life sentences with no possibility of parole. Well, if you enjoy more stories such as these, I upload new content every Tuesday and Thursday. God bless and stay safe.